Hi guys, I've uh, put this uh, presentation together for solving problems in a transformer circuit. Um, it's not fixing or sort of maintaining a transformer, it's more about calculating the relationship sort of between what's going on on the primary windings and what's happening on the secondary windings. Okay, so it's a relationship between the two sort of different circuits, the primary circuit and the secondary circuit, not um, getting your hands dirty fixing the transformer. Okay, so uh, the objective of this presentation is using the supplied formula um, we're going to solve problems in the transformer circuit. So, um, what have we got? Okay, so uh, in your test or exam, you're going to receive sort of like a question that's going to look something a little bit like this, but the values are going to be be different. But the principle for solving or completing um, the problem is the same. So, uh, what you're going to get? So you're going to get the um, the transformer equation. Okay, and you're going to have your um, formula will here. Okay, so just to recap on this, so what you want to find is in the center. Okay, so if you're looking for watts, okay, you can you go into this quarter here, power in watts, you go in this quarter here, volts, this quarter here, ohms and resistance in this quarter here, and amps for current, which is in this quarter here. Okay. So again, this is this presentation is all about finding out, find, solving the transformer, sort of like looking at what we have, okay, and trying to work out what we don't know effectively, okay. So we're looking for the relationship between what's on the primary and what's on the secondary winding, okay. <clears throat> Uh, so let's have a just quick recap of the terminology and some of the abbreviations that we're using. So uh, what are we looking for and what do we have? Okay, so when you uh, start your question, ideally what you need to do is sort of write down what you have, sort of br break it down into sort of primary and secondary winding. So you could say like uh, V1, uh, sorry, VP, IP, RP, NP, and PP. So uh, V is voltage, I is current, R is resistance. N is the number of turns, okay, on the coil. Okay, so NP would be the number of turns on the primary coil. NS would be the number of turn on, turns on the secondary coil. Uh, P is the power in watts. Um, and the way we sort of identify between the difference between primary and the secondary one is we have a subscript, okay? So you'll have a capital N, and then down here you'll have a little tiny P, or a little tiny s, okay. Um, that is just to indicate that there's, that, you know, what part of the transformer we are working to or working with, okay. So the problem, okay, we've been given a problem like this. So what we need to do is you'll probably end up having to calculate. So we're going to calculate the number of turns on the primary, okay, the uh, the current on the primary, the resistance on the primary, and the power on the primary coil so that's all relating to this part of the uh, the transformer here on the secondary coil okay so we've on the secondary coil we've already got the watts the ohms and the number of turns okay so what we're going to be looking for on the secondary coil is the voltage and the current okay so we're looking for voltage and current on the secondary okay so what about you know that that's seven items that we need to find. Okay, so how are we going to do that? So firstly, I would write down, okay, everything that you have, or everything you need to find and everything that you have, and lay it out in a logical order. So like you've got your primary on one side and your secondary on another side, okay? And then start putting in the information that you've got, okay? So you can populate the details, okay? And just use that as a master reference. So every time you work something out, pop the new value in there. Okay, so what do we have and what can we find out? Okay, so we've got our formula wheel up here, okay, and we've got our transformer equation over here, okay. So at the moment we know the number of turns on the primary, uh, sorry, not the number of turns, the voltage on the primary, okay, we know the number of turns on the secondary, but that's about it. Okay, so we can't really use that one because we haven't got enough detail. Okay, so what we need to do is we now need to look at our formula wheel. Okay, and we can look at what we've got and what we need to find. Okay, with this formula wheel, okay, with the formula wheel, you can't mix them up. So you can't use the voltage on the primary, okay, and the resistance on the secondary, okay, to work out 
for example the current okay so they must if you're using this wheel they must be related on each side you can only use what the information you have on each side of the coil you can't mix primary and secondary information okay so it must must remain you know so say for example if you want to work out the current on this one for example we've got the voltage and we've got the resistance we've got the voltage on the primary and the resistance on the secondary we can't mix those because they're one's on the primary one's on the secondary so we need to look at what, what other information we have so therefore so looking at what we've got so we've got number of turns okay we can't use number of turns with this formula wheel so we that scraps that out but we do have power on the secondary in watts and resistance on the secondary in ohms okay so with that we can actually use that to find out either our current or our voltage okay so if I, if we look at the power and the resistance okay so if we look for if we're looking for voltage we could use so this is the voltage so we've got the power and resistance so we could square root power times the resistance okay and that would give us our voltage or we could use the power divided by the resistance square root that a square root power divided by the resistance to give us our current okay so we've got two options there so there's two different pathways you can go okay so what we have there so we've got we're going to use this one here so we're going to use this to find out our current so we're going to work out current on the secondary first so that's our formula okay so when you do this don't forget to do the square root okay so do this in the inside the square root first or in the root first okay so do p divided by r and then square root the answer okay otherwise if you do this part so 50 divided by 8 i think you end up with like 6.25 okay so what we need is to make sure that you square root the answer and then you end up with our 2.25 amps okay so that's our current on the secondary so once you've worked that out then just pop that in there okay like so okay. and then we can start looking at our next stage as well okay so we can now we can use we could use our current and our resistance okay to work out our voltage so we can do i times r or r times i okay so we can do our resistance times our current equals our voltage which will be 8 ohms times 2.5 amps okay and that gives us 20 volts so that's our voltage sorted on our secondary coil okay how far can we go now okay so if we look at what we've got so we've got we've completely solved all of our unknowns on our secondary winding and so now what we need to do is we now need to start concentrating on our primary winding okay so at the moment we've only got 240 volts on the primary okay so what we need to do is we can't use our wheel our formula wheel okay so we're going to have to go across and we're going to have to use this formula here okay so we're going to use this formula okay um to get the marks okay so the easier if the information's there okay the assessor can can mark it if you just put the answer then you know and you get it wrong obviously then you get score zero marks a lot of the um the points for the exam are actually in the workings, so showing your workings out so actually providing the right answer is quite low well, it will only produce like one or two points but demonstrating you can actually carry out the task to do the correct formula lay it out accurately okay is it's worth is that's where the, the points are, are won and lost if you know what i mean okay so with this formula here so vp over vs equals np over ns equals is over ip now we can we don't necessarily have to use vp over vs equals np over ns okay we can use vp over vs equals is over ip we can use np over ns over ns np over ns or equals is over ip i'm tripping myself up here okay so we, we don't necessarily need to use it from left to right we can actually you know we can use those two and those two we can use those two and those two or we can use these two and these two okay so the first thing i would do is write the formula down okay and then underneath that or next to it 
write in the values that you've got okay and this way we can actually look at what we have and what we need to find okay and this will actually help us in selecting the formula that we need to actually find our unknowns so we're going to look for NP so we've got because we know VP we know VS and we know NS so we're going to find NP okay so but you could but you could if you wanted to you could go um, VP over VS okay over IS over IP okay so you could use these two and find IP but at the moment we're going to find NP okay so I've transposed this formula okay transposing sounds like a horrible word but it's all it is is just moving the formula around um, I'm not going to go into it now because it's a it's a whole another hour of PowerPoint if you know what I mean so what we're going to do is I'm just going to give you the formula okay so this is the formula that we're going to use so effectively that goes up there so it's going to be VP times NS over VS equals NP so then what we can do with that is we can then punch in our values okay like so, so 240 times 120 divided by 20 okay and that gives us 1440 okay and that's n so that's number of turns so that tells me okay that the primary coil has 1440 turns on it okay and so these and the secondary has 120 okay so you can tell that that is going to be a step down transformer so you we know or we can see that anyway but it's a step down transformer okay so the primary now has 144 144 140 i'm going to get my words out 1440 turns on it okay so the next step is to then look at we're still back on this formula okay but now we've got all we've got left is the IP to find okay so that's the formula that we're going to use so it's going to be NS times IS over NP and that equals IP so then we punch in our um, the data that we have so it's going to be uh, 120 times 2.5 over 1440 and that gives us a current on the primary coil of 0 0.2083 okay so it's quite a low current so that's like 208 milliamps um so as you can see um the higher the voltage okay so if, if the if the voltage is higher on the primary than on the secondary the the current will be lower on the primary okay and higher on the secondary okay so lower voltages generally higher currents higher voltages generally lower currents okay so that's our current on our primary okay so now what we've got is we've now exhausted this formula here so we can't use that anymore because we know all of the values so what we're then going to have to do is turn back to our formula wheel okay and we're going to use our formula wheel and only the information that we have on the primary to solve for our other two unknowns okay so we need to find the power and the resistance okay so we're going to look for the resistance okay so resistance from our even from our Ohm's law triangle is V divided by I equals our resistance okay so voltage divided by the current equals our resistance and from there we punch in our values that we know so it's going to be 240 volts divided by 0.2083 okay and that gives us a resistance on the primary of 1152.18 ohms okay so quite a high resistance okay and that's another value found okay so punch that into your master table so you, that you can keep track of all your values and then the next step okay we've got the last thing to do is the power okay as a rule okay the power on the primary okay equals the power on the secondary and vice versa so whatever the power is on the primary will be on the secondary okay so in in our case we have got 50 watts on the secondary okay we will have 50 watts on the primary okay but we're going to just going to prove that theory okay so we're now going to do uh, 
the voltage times the current, and that equals power in watts. Okay, so then we punch in what we know, so 240 volts times 0 0.2083, and that equals 49.992 watts. Okay, and the chances are the only reason why it's not bang on 50 is because we rounded our current. Okay, so that's where that comes from. So then now you can punch that into our, um, our master table, and we have completed the problem. That is it done. Nothing more to do. Okay. We found all our unknowns. Okay. And we can see we can see what values we have on either the primary or the secondary windings. Okay. Um, there is one more step that we can do, and it's more of a sanity check just to make sure that our values are correct. Okay. So what we've got here, so 240 divided by 20 will have a value. 1440 divided by 120 will have a value and 2.5 divided by 0 0.2083 will have a value as well and they should all equal the same okay so if you divide that by that that should that will equal 12 that by that that should equal 12 and that by that should equal 12 so they all equal the same okay and so we're just going to just check that mathematically Okay, so I've done 240 divided by 20 is 12. Okay, 1440 divided by 120 is 12. Okay, and 2.5 divided by 0 0.2083 is 12.00192. And again, the reason why that doesn't add up exactly to 12 is because we, we would have rounded this one. Okay, so we would have rounded our current on the primary. Um, that's fine that is fine if you if you come up with that and you've got that and you're getting these values it's all good okay so i would be happy with that and it's that is purely just down to um, not a rounding error but just the way we've rounded okay so uh, thanks for watching i hope this helps and if you have any questions um, please see me in class have a good